so uh, let me start. Um, first, there is a link of uh, what I'm going to present in the chat. So I'm going to send uh, um, this link again in the chat uh, if uh, you arrived a bit late. And uh, um, it's public, which means you can um, you can run whatever happens here um, on the cloud. So if you have um, registered on Kaggle, so you should see a copy and edit button uh, right right here in the um, in the right upper corner of this web page, and you can click that. And you, you may have to agree some sort of uh, uh, term and conditions, but uh, uh, but you can you can do that. So if you have registered Kaggle account, if you haven't registered Kaggle account, it's pretty uh, easy. I'm not sure if uh, this um, window is shared. Let me change to uh, desktop one. Okay. So this is now my desktop, and uh, you can see. Uh, so this is a uh, um, this is Kaggle website. You can basically register with your Google account. It's like one click, and you're good. All right. So so now let's back here, um, and I'm gonna go into by clicking edit. So. Uh, it's a editable version of the notebook. And uh, uh, okay, let me switch this to a light theme. Okay, okay better. Um, so first, uh, I would like to thank you for uh, attending the seminar. And uh, um, thank you. Um, First, so this is our title. Basically, uh, we'll try to learn how computer learns. And uh, um, so we'll learn some Python uh, language. And during my preparation of this talk, I found actually uh, TensorFlow is more accessible uh, to someone who has never seen machine learning before. So I decided to use uh, prepare the talk using TensorFlow. And the next semester, so we'll learn a class which is uh, optimization method. So if you have um, been taken uh, the four four nine class uh, this semester, so we are basically uh, in the second half of the semester we are learning optimization methods for various things. And first, the, uh, so next semester we'll we'll uh, we'll code our uh, we'll code our this uh, code in uh, Kaggle Cloud. And this is Kaggle Cloud. As you can see, we have, a f it's in my browser, but uh, um, but it's in my browser, but uh, um, as you can see, it has a full dashboard. For example, I, I see my draft session, I can see my CPU usage and my RAM usage. I can stop, I can try to add-ons and blah, blah, blah. All right. So this is a notebook style uh, Python programming. And uh, why I'm saying it's notebook is because, um, for example, let me, uh, so um, it's because it's literally like a notebook. For example, right now this cell is a markdown cell. If I double click this cell, so you can click here and uh, double click here and you enter the edit mode you can see you can you can insert an image um and uh you can for example insert a link uh you can make this part bold and this becomes bold um and for example uh i can say uh welcome to our math seminar all right and uh, uh if i hit control and enter 
So you can hit Control and Enter on your keyboard, and it renders in the cell. And in next cell, this is a this is a code cell. Um, so why I'm saying it's code cell is because I can put Python code right here. So for example, um, if I click this little wrong button, it says uh, it execute the cell. So if I execute the cell, um, these two lines of code will be executed. And this pound sign is, uh, is in Python, it means a comment. So if I run this, okay. So these two messages will be print. So I can print even more advanced things. So for example, I can print, uh, I can use what is called F string. So this is called an F string. Uh, for example, I can say uh, um, three plus two is, and inside the curly bracket, I can put arithmetic uh, operations here. Actually, you see that uh, this part is a string because it's in the double quotation mark. But inside the curly parentheses, this thing will be evaluated. You guys will see it's three plus two is five. All right. So, and for example, in Python, um, if you have learned C or C++, you know that the variable assignment is quite tricky because uh, you have to specify the type Boolean, um, like an integer float. And uh, in Python, it's simply like x equals 5.0. And we, we can see x is already in our memory. So we can uh, check if we can add a code cell. So we can check, we can print, for example, type of x and dir of x. So type of x is literally the type of variable x is, and dir is associated a function method with X. So for example, if we hit control and enter, this code will run. Uh, let me add a new line here. So for example, uh, we can see that um, the type of X is a float and the IR of X. So it has some of these uh, methods associated with it. And uh, for example, we can print, right now we can do Two, and uh, if we have two asterisks, it means exponential. So, for example, two to the three power, two to the third power, and we have eight. And we can uh, do functions in it. For example, f equals it's called lambda. If I hit, if uh, I type lambda without this, uh, um, if I type lambda without this uh, comment block you see that lambda changes color. It means uh, it's being highlighted. So I hit N. Oh, it doesn't do. Okay, so lambda X. Oh, it does. Okay, so, and then X to the third power. So right now, this is literally like F of X. So for example, right now, this is uh, the function. And uh, um, in the next cell, we can literally evaluate this function using our uh, like literal evaluation uh, evaluation of the function. Um, so it's f of uh, x. So for example, if I want to do two, we will get eight. Okay, right here. Um, so for example, so next is uh, we want to go through some simple logic. Um, the thing is, the computer is good at uh, these logic things. Um, for example, right here, we let a equals two, and the next cell we can check is a two. So this means uh, we check check if a is two. So oh, why is that? Okay, here we go. Um, as we can see here, uh, if a is two, then if I check a, if a is two, so this equal equal means if a is two, it, we will get true. But if we check if a three, uh, Python will say it's false. All right. So um, now I said, if we have, so if a 
is to let's print and uh, um, a is a okay and else we do nothing so we just print nothing so for example right here we get a is 2 okay however if we change this to a is 1 we will get to the other branch of, uh, of this part so we'll print nothing all right um and right here uh, well, in the Kaggle's cat versus dog competition. So, um, and, uh, um, so this is a cat versus dog competition. Um, and let me introduce what is Kaggle. Kaggle is Google's uh, data science machine learning uh, platform. Uh, it has several, so for example, it has compete. So right now we have this competition and it, because it's a competition, it has a leaderboard. For example, it has school in it, and uh, um, and you have data. So there are many public data set on Kaggle. So uh, for example, you can have uh, uh, these are the current uh, most popular data set. You can you can also check the the one with most votes. For example, this one is most voted is a COVID-19 open research data set. And, uh, um, and here are the notebooks. Here are what people, uh, what people sharing their public notebook. And you can have your work. So for example, uh, these are the code written by me and uh, you can you can host. Um, so you can let your code your own code run on um, Kaggle Cloud. And uh, Kaggle Cloud has a very powerful uh, hardware. It's called a graphical processing unit or in short GPU. So in communities, you have a big board and you have also courses and you can learn some of uh, the intermediate and introduction machine learning. And actually I designed some of my class uh, following uh, Kaggle's guides because uh, uh, I'm a long time programmer. So sometimes I may not um, like uh, be putting in my shoes in my audience. So I learned some of things from these uh, elementary course as well. So if you are like to get into Python, you can check the course on uh, Kaggle. And of course it's free, so it's very nice. Okay, let's back here. Um, so you guys must have heard the term machine learning, I mean a lot. And uh, um, what happens here is um, we are seeing this machine learning everywhere. And what is machine learning? Uh, imagine, so I, I give you guys an example right here. It's like how we prepare uh, the exams is by doing practicing exams. So the computer does exactly the same, but the mechanics are a bit different. We do practice exam by understanding the inner mechanics. For example, we learn the theorem and then we try the exercises. But uh, uh, if a computer learns calculus, what computer does is computer sees lots of problems and the computer does not care uh, what theorem uh, or what lemmas are used in these exercises. So the computer only sees the exercise, the problem, and the answer. So computer memorize the problem and the answer. Whenever a new problem comes, so it compares with the old problem in the problem pool and try to come up with an answer. So it's like uh, this, is totally black box and uh, um, so uh, we are learning how computer can learn this. So right now uh, I'm gonna import a bunch of packages. So for example, uh, I have uh, the OS is some uh, helping function. Uh, if you are taking a full for night class, you are quite familiar with the NumPy now. NumPy is our numerical linear algebra package. So we can do matrix vector multiplication, etc. And pandas is a uh, Python data analytical analytics, uh, this package. So it's a data science um, package. It's called pandas. 
And sklearn is called scikit-learn. So it has a bunch of、uh, helper functions, utility functions to help us, you know, avoid writing our function、uh, ourselves. And this is a plot function. And、uh, um, so let me import it. And、uh, let me skip this and let me print.、Um, so here,、um, this are the three files. So ignore this file, and let's look at these two files. So this train zip, and let me while talking about it, let me unzip it because it's gonna take a while.、Um, replacing.、Um, Oh, actually, I already unzipped it. I see. That's interesting. Um. Oh. God, that's weird. Let me. Um. Okay, I think I already unzipped it, which means, which means, let's see if I can,、um, I can do this. Okay, then that's good. I already unzipped it, so、uh, then that's good.、Um, so we have two files, train and test. The train is like、uh, our exercise. The exercise we want to computer、uh, C. And uh, uh, the test file is actually our test. It's like after training the computer,、um, we let the computer do a final exam to see how computer does. All right. So, and we have a bunch of、uh, images. So a dog, a cat, and、uh, um, the thing is, first we need. So these are、uh, images, and we need first we need to label the image. For example, if So in the following、uh, cell of code, if we see a dog here, we give this image and a label called one. Okay, right here. If else, so else here, if the image has a cat in it,、um, we give this image a zero. Okay, so let's、uh, let's do it. So, for example, right here,、um, then we can see the、uh, dog image here.、Uh, the category is one, and cat category is zero. Basically,、uh, it's like、uh, we have to let our computer to give. We have to give our computer a more clear and concise instruction. So, what we need to do is we change. This is called encoding.、Um, we change、um, the category from an abstraction to a number. So we assign category a number, and now let's、uh, view a random image. So we、um, we load this function, and then we run this cell. We'll see a random image. So for example, apparently this is a cat, all right.、Um, and、uh, for example, I'm I'm 34 years old. I've been seeing cats for 30 for 30 years. You guys may have been seeing cat for. Like 20 years, and uh, uh, your brain already recognizes what a cat is by just looking at the cat. But how? But have you ever thought about how your brain can tell a cat? Like right here. Um. Like for example, what what is、uh, what is the characteristic? What's the feature of being a cat? For example, it has two eyes, right? But human also has two eyes. I mean, it has a nose, but we also have a nose. So how our brain can extract some high-level abstract features from an image is is like totally mysterious. So and how computer can achieve something similar is quite tricky. Okay, so twenty、uh, years ago, let me let me say this: twenty years ago, by given. Computer in a cat image, and the computer can 
output one or zero, depending on whether this is a dog or a cat. This is almost impossible. The computer may, it's like uh, the computer may not even be、um, achieving much higher accuracy than a random guess. Let's say this. Okay. So if you just guess randomly,、um, like whether this image is a cat or dog. It may achieve higher accuracy than a complicated computer algorithm 20 years ago,、um, but after、um, what we called this deep learning was introduced、uh, maybe 20 years ago, the picture totally changed.、Um, but、uh, the deep learning、uh, hasn't been populated uh, since. Uh, I think maybe ten years ago. It's because it's too hard to compute. So with some of the modern GPU technology, we're able、uh, to train, or say, to make these models learnable, so that these models can be deployed to tell whether this is a cat picture. For example, let's、uh, let's run another. So for example, this is the dog apparently. But、uh, the tricky part is it also has another person in this image, so it further complicates、uh, the difficulty of、uh, telling there is a dog in this image. So let's see another. Okay,、uh, we can see this is a cat, and uh, uh, but it also has、uh, some you know surroundings, which is quite difficult、uh, for our computer to extract, and.、Uh, um, So right here,、um, so these codes, we load a deep learning model called VGG16. Okay. So later on, we will see what VGG16 is. But、uh, this cell of code loads a model called VGG16, and let's run it. It may take a while, I think. Okay.、Uh, it's it's good. So as we can see, this is our model. It's quite complicated. So each line here represents what is called a layer. So, for example, we have one layer here, and we have another layer here. As we can see,、uh, all these here are high-level,、um, like languages in Python. By high level, I mean you don't have to. Implement each layer by hand. For example, you have to define matrix vector multiplication. You don't have to do that. Right here,、um, what you just want to do is you call high-level package like like this syntax. And、uh, if we want to build the model ourselves, sometimes we just need to copy paste existing like implementation of layers, and we can build a very nice machine learning model. So in the model summary of TensorFlow, each line represents a layer, and here is a parameter number. And what parameter means? This is basically a building block of our model. It means these parameter we want the model see the data, so the data can change these parameter such that the model becomes a better model. So right now the the model is untrained. Okay, so actually it's trained, but、uh, it lacks fine tuning.、Um, so it's we can just say it's untrained. So it's untrained. It means these parameter cannot lead the model to tell cats and dogs. And let's uh, let's uh, just as we can see the parameter number of parameter、uh, is <laughs> 15 million almost.、Um, So, in the past, the training of this type of model is is impossible. So until the intro, in, introduction of GPU,、uh, GP GPU computing, this general purpose GPU computing about ten years ago, and it totally changes、um, the landscape. So let's、uh, let's load the data. So here is we just、uh, um, we just load the data. Um, into some readable forms for the machine. So,、uh, so for example, we run this data. So、uh, here is we.、Uh, so these code I directly copy from TensorFlow official web page. It's basically it's wrapping up the data into what they call a image generator. So、uh, in 450, we'll learn what a generator is, and then we feed the generator、uh, to. 
this data generator for the TensorFlow. Okay, so let's run this image. So this cell of code is just a bookkeeping. I just copied it from TensorFlow official page. Uh, we just convert our data to a TensorFlow uh, this uh, format. All right, and next is we want to augment the data. So for example, what we do to augment the data is, for example, this is our original CAD image, and we don't want our computer um, to cannot. So uh, if we rotate our image a bit, or we flip our image, um, we can tell it's still a cat, but sometimes the computer cannot tell it's a cat. So we have to do this type of a data augmentation so that the computer see the reflections um, the rotations of the same image so the computer will tell oh it's the same cat and this is called data augmentation next is we use um, the data format um, we just had and we convert the test file um, to the data format so that we want to test our model if the model can tell a cat is a cat a dog is a dog okay um and let me remind you guys again um that i think this is zero oh one zero okay so i think um our setting is a dog is a one cat is a zero so let's uh let's see and uh, um so this may take a while. So if you're currently running, uh, it may take like 30 seconds, I think. Basically is we convert the test data to a format the TensorFlow can understand. So right here are just the sample codes I copied from TensorFlow uh, official. Um, this how do we um, generate the TensorFlow format data from a pandas data frame. Okay, so we're done. Um, so we have our prediction and we can see the test data frame. So originally, so as we can see here, it has file name, but the file name does not have a label associated with anymore. So in order to prevent the computer uh, cheating, we just don't include cat or dog in the file name anymore. And the computer has to see the image itself to tell if it's a cat or dog. All right. So let's check the prediction result. And dog is a one and cat is zero, remember. And so, uh, okay, so right here, um, this is a dog. Okay, it's good. This is a dog. It's good. Oh, this, this is not a dog. So this is a dog. It's good. This is a dog. No, this is a dog. No. This is a dog, apparently not. This is a dog. So right now for the untrained model, it's like, a, it's basically a random guess. By random, I mean, it just guesses, it just guesses every image as a dog, right? Um, I mean, so right now it, it hasn't learned yet. Okay. So the next is we have to train the model. So here we'll load a model that's been trained. So I trained using Kaggle Cloud. Uh, a while ago and uh, um, so we want to load it okay it's the same model the only difference is the parameter is different from previous untrained model I let um, this model see lots of uh, these uh, sample images so the information of the sample images are encoded in these parameters and um, I can say it's a trained model. And let's let's check again. Okay, so this model. So right now, this model right here overrided um, the previous model. And uh, let's uh, let's run this prediction result again. I think this is a one or zero. Let's check. Okay, so it might take a while. So it has 64 images and uh, um, 
and the model will、um, predict each one of them. So okay, it's done. And let's check again. Okay, judgment time. So this is a dog. Apparently, it, it is a dog. And this picture is quite difficult to tell because there's a fence in it. Actually, because th these images, I think, are in courtesy of,、uh, um, I think, some uh, shelter uh, in United, some shelter organization in United States. So、uh, many things are for like adoptions. So you may see these fences. This is a cat. So now it can tell. Our trained model can tell a cat is a cat now. This is a dog. Good. This is a cat. Good. This is a dog. Good. This is a dog. Good. This is a dog. Good. Dog. Dog. Actually, it gets all nine out of nine. And let's see if、uh, it's true.、Um, let's just sample another nine images. See if it's good. So it's a cat. Good. 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 It's a dog. Okay. We see. This is a cat. Um, but、uh, I mean, we we can tell this image has certain、um, irregularities with the other. For example, in other images, we see all two years of、uh, a cat. But this image, we、uh, we don't have a full this image of a cat because we see the ear is hidden, and we don't. For example, we we didn't see some of、uh, the contour of a cat. And uh, uh, our model mistakenly classify、uh, this image as a dog. So, but I mean, so we had seen, for example, maybe 25, but there is only one error. At, I mean, it's pretty accurate. It's over 90% accuracy. And in 20 years ago, like I said, it's just marginally better than a random guess. So,、um, and let's let's try this again. To see the accuracy, so okay, so for these nine images, I think they're all good, right? So,、um, so it's pretty accurate. And next is we'll briefly we'll briefly go through how a computer achieve that. First, let's see these four images. Okay,、um, is. First, we have to learn how computer represent images in the form that we learn in our class. So I'm I'm not sure if、uh, um, you have learned linear algebra or not, but I assume all of the, our audiences have learned linear algebra and know what vector and matrix are.、Um, the thing is, the thing is in our linear algebra, it's taught in like a, a way. That, for example, we have to learn first. We have to learn Gaussian elimination, row echelon form, and it's quite dated. So,、um, if you want to learn linear algebra in a new way, I recommend to go to MIT Open Course, and uh, um, there is a. I believe the、uh, Serge Long has a、um, new class of linear algebra in which we'll learn these things in a very very. Data science oriented way. For example, we have scalar, vector, matrix, and tensor. You may not have seen tensor, but tensor is very straightforward to understand, and it's literally in these images. For example, so、uh, if A is one, A is a scalar, and V is, for example, one, two, and it's a vector. Okay, and、uh, um, so. Then we can have a matrix. So, for example, M is、uh, one, two, and uh, uh, three, four. If we print M,、uh, we'll see this is a matrix. And、uh, sometimes we'll convert it to a NumPy array, so、uh, it's easier to be manipulatable in Python. So, for example, this is a matrix form, and the tensor. Is literally right here, so it's like we stack. So、uh, I stole this picture from TensorFlow official guide.、Um, is we stack these matrix matrices together, so it's like a it's like a three D matrix, and we call it a tensor. And computer 
represent the images using tensor. Let me skip of this. This is image show. So uh, let's load an image from the Pokemon dataset. So this is a Pokemon. I'm not sure what this is. Let me run another. So we randomly choose a Pokemon from this set. Um, let's choose something cooler. Um, do we have some sort of a more fancier one? Oh, this one is fancy. Okay. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe it's legendary or not. I'm not sure. But uh, we have a Pokemon image, right? But so, and uh, what the code we call to display this image is we do this image show of this G. So G is, we read the Pokemon from a file. So this file is some JPEG file. So I think, um, so for example, so I think the random, Pokemon is just a JPEG file. Okay, so it's 717 JPEG. And so from a JPEG file to a G, and what is this G? So let's check this G. What is uh, the G? So let's first uh, see type of G. It's a NumPy ND array. And what does this mean is it's actually a 3D array. So for example, if we put G shape here, it's a 256, 256, three. It means, so if we look at this image right here, so the first 253 is um, the number of rows. The second 253 is the number of columns. The third one, the three, so we have 253 and 253 and three, right? This three is the depth, or say the depth of this tensor. So the three actually uh, corresponds to, we have three color channel, which is R and G and B. So for example, um, if, we extract, this means we uh, extract the first channel. So Python indexing starts from zero. So if we do this, means we extract the red channel, okay? So this is what is like uh, for the red channel um, of our image. So this image is basically consisting of red, uh, green, and blue, and we compose them together and we get the image. And next is, okay, next is a more difficult part, is how computer learns. So here uh, it involves a bit of math. And uh, um, the first one is we have to transform our problem from a prop, so from a mathematically solvable problem. Uh, why originally, um, how do we learn, how the computer learns to tell from cats versus dog is impossible is because the problem is very difficult to be formulated mathematically. Here, what we wanna do is we reformulate these problems into optimization problems. Okay, let's see what happens. First is, um, so, the model we use is uh, is called a neural network. And we have our data. So for example, the X here is the data. For example, is a, is the a image uh, originally we had. And this Y right here without a hat is the actual, like the true label of the data. For example, this Y equals one if uh, this X is a dog and this y is zero if this x represents a cat. And right here, the y hat here, y hat here is our model's output, okay? Um, so the first thing, whoops. The first thing we wanna see is if y is a, uh, a real scalar, 
then what we can do is we simply minimize the difference. This thing is y hat. So this is a prediction of our model, and this is y. So we simply we minimize, and this double vertical line means norm. Basically, we can think it like absolute value. And so this is the difference between、um, the true value and our predicted value. So, and the W right here is the parameter. Actually,、uh, are the parameters of our model because our model has millions of parameters.、Um, the W here. Okay. So what we want to do is originally the model function is a function of x. It's a function of data. So we give our model a data. We have an output. But here. Whenever we want to train our model to be able to achieve these tasks, is we use what is called a loss function. So the loss function is actually a function in the parameters. Is we minimize the difference of our prediction with our truth by searching a good set of parameters. Okay. So as we can see、uh, in the previous example, the untrained model. It has a bad W, but a a good a trained model. It has a very good set of a W, and it can achieve, for example, very high accuracy、uh, for the、um, dog versus cat problem. And now, what a neural network is like. So I I think you guys might have seen this picture. So this is actually a neural network.、Um, And it's actually a graphical representation of what this H can be,、um, and the structure of this neural network is proposed maybe 40 years ago.、Um, so right here are called neurons, and we have a first layer which is input layer, and this layer is called hidden layer. This layer is called hidden layer as well, and this is our output layer. So from the input to the output, we have this uh, operation. Um, so this is a graphical interpretation,、uh, like interpretation of this mathematical operation. The mathematical operation is actually quite straightforward and simple. So the a superscript l means the values achieved on. The Lth layer. For example, we can think this L to be one. Okay, so this is our layer number one, and this A superscript L, which is A one, is the values sitting in these neurons. And this mathematical operation is from this layer. How do we get to the next layer? To get to the next layer is kind of simple. So we have a vector right here, right?、Um, Because we have several neurons, so each neuron has a value, so it's essentially a vector. How do we get to the next layer? Is we use multiply this with the W, then we plus with another vector B, and we compose this linear function with the nonlinear function. So this sigma is the nonlinear function. It's sometimes called activation, and then we get the next layers、um, like our output. So. What happens here is for each layer we use this structure, and then we get a neural network. So, for our model,、uh, the mathematical operation is more complicated.、Um, so, for example, our image is uh, uh, two two four、uh, times. Actually,、uh, this should be three. My bad.、Um, so it has a three. Which are the RGB channels of a two two four by two two four? Okay, so we have all these images. So what we do is we use what is called a filter. So these little blocks are called a filter, and this model right here is called a convolutional neural network. So convolutional neural network. So each filter represents a convolution. So what we do is we Use this little filter to do complete、uh, to do convolution. For example, we have if we have eight filters, and after the filter is being applied on this image, we'll have a bunch of uh, like uh, abstraction from these images, 
and then we use another filter we do it again so we get more images you can think these images are the abstraction it's like our brain how our brain process these images is we abstract is we uh, like extract high level information and you can you can view these are the high level information and we do it again and lastly we get a vector and then this vector is being feed into this uh, nonlinear function right here and this is how we get the output okay um so i may not have a time to go through some mathematics here so right here, uh, the model we ha uh, we used here is use uh, what is called a cross entropy, because we can see um, cat versus dog is not like a single value. It's actually a probability distribution. So for example, this x here is our sample, and in the like the ground truth, the probab uh, the probability distribution is given this image. So it's a conditional probability given this image. So the probability of uh, this image is a dog, actually it's one. And if uh, uh, this image is, uh, is a dog, then the conditional probability of this image, so X represents a dog. Then the probability of this dog is the cat is zero. So apparently this zero here means a uh, cat. And this zero is a probability of this image being a cat is zero. And then, uh, so I may, I may want to skip that. And uh, so if you want to read it, uh, it's online. So we basically, we want to minimize this function right here. It's called cross entropy. It's comparing the difference of two probability distributions. And we want to minimize that. And lastly is uh, um, the optimization methods. So in next semester, in uh, 450, we'll learn um, these optimization methods and how do we apply these optimization methods to train this model. So essentially, by training, we're solving this problem, this uh, minimization problem. Um, so let's summarize. Um, as we can see here, um, so if we want a computer to learn, first we have to represent our data to a format that computer can read, for example, right here. And uh, um, the deep learning model learns to tell cats and dog by uh, minimizing this function, which is called loss function. And uh, uh, our VGG model, it's a convolutional neural network it's using this little filters to extract abstract features from the image. And lastly, is we basically, we train this model uh, by this gradient descent algorithm. So, um, and lastly is we will learn how to code these in uh, 450, but uh, uh, in a different package. So it's uh, in PyTorch and it's more resembles um, NumPy, which we learned in 449 this quarter, this semester. So uh, that's it for the talk. And uh, uh, now I guess it's question time.